a landmark judgment of the European Court of Human Rights, which ruled that Switzerland violated the human rights of a group of elderly women by failing to adequately fight climate change. Well, the court said that Switzerland's efforts to meet its emission reduction targets had been woefully inadequate. The judgment also ruled that the women had been denied access to justice as their case had been rejected by all Swiss courts. Well, we recently heard from the Swiss president, Viola Amherd, who said sustainability, biodiversity and net zero are very important to Switzerland. She said the country would continue to keep working on them. Well, that came as two other cases were ruled inadmissible. Now, in those, six Portuguese youth and a French mayor were also attempting to force their governments and others in Europe to take more ambitious action to fight climate change. Well, in a moment, we will hear from a climate change lawyer. But first, let's have a listen to climate activist Greta Thunberg, who shared her reaction to today's verdicts. Today's rulings make very clear that the European states have a legal responsibility to take real climate action and to protect people and to protect its citizens. Um, it cannot be a political choice whether to respect human rights or not. Greta Thunberg there, well, Tessa Carnes, an international climate change lawyer and the executive director of Uplift. It's a climate campaign group. I spoke to her earlier about these cases. Well, it's a case that was brought um, on behalf of a large group of elderly Swiss women um, on the basis that older women in particular are especially vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. We've seen, for example, with heat waves that are driven or made more intense by climate change, that when those hit, it's often the elderly and elderly women in particular whose health suffers and so they have brought this case arguing that Switzerland's uh, climate change policies, its commitment to reducing greenhouse gas emissions uh, is inadequate to protect the health, the housing, the human rights of Swiss women and they have succeeded mm -hmm. and the courts confirmed today that it is a legally binding obligation that governments have to make sure that their climate change policies are sufficient to protect people's human rights. And so, so it's a really significant finding. You say it's significant, Tessa, but how much of it is actually symbolic? What would the Swiss government now have to do following this ruling? Well, like any government that is found to be in breach of its legal obligations, it's now under an obligation to align its action with what the law requires. So what's clear, although, you know, I'm yet to read the 100 page plus judgment in detail, but in the past when courts have made these sorts of findings and they have made these sorts of findings in other countries in the past, it requires governments to be more ambitious in terms of their policies to cut carbon emissions. They've got to stop burning fossil fuels at the pace that they currently do. So the path of action is very clear. And Tessa, it wasn't all good news for people filing those cases today. We had some young people in Portugal and a mayor in France whose cases were ruled inadmissible. Once again, if you could just tell us a little bit about those two cases. Yeah, certainly. So the case on behalf of Portuguese young people was brought again because there was real concern that the way that the impacts of climate change have been playing out in Portugal, which is, you know, increasingly intense and frequent wildfires, heat waves, those are having really tangible impacts on the lives and on the health of young people in Portugal. And so, again, they've argued that it's a breach of their human rights. In this instance, the court didn't make any finding as to whether or not um, the Portuguese government or any other European government is, in fact, breaching their human rights. They simply made a finding that those young people should have ventilated that claim. They should have gone first to courts in Portugal before going to a higher court, which is the European Court of Human Rights. So they didn't actually engage with the merits of that argument at all. They simply said that it wasn't the right forum in which to hear that claim. And you work in this field uh, of legal uh, cases around climate. Are we likely to see more of these kind of cases coming up? How widespread um, is it for people around the world to bring such cases? Well, we absolutely will see more of these kinds of cases. It's already a widespread phenomenon. There are literally dozens of cases that are currently playing out in countries around the world. It's not just limited to the UK and Europe, although there is an active case in UK courts at the moment challenging 
the robustness and the credibility of the UK government's climate change policy. But, you know, we've seen cases in Latin America, in Africa, in Australia, in the US. They are everywhere. And the findings of the court, the European Court of Human Rights today, will, I think, only underline that this is an issue that rises to the question of whether or not governments are acting lawfully and inevitably I think we will see as people get more and more desperate as they continue to see governments failing to act with the seriousness and the speed that's required they will inevitably turn to courts more and more.